All right. Looks like I'm live, that's good. I just always like hopping on a little early, you know? Hang out with my people, chat a little bit before we move. Hope you're all doing well today. You'll have to excuse my like, just my eyes feel super dry. I'm having a lot of sinus issues um, for the past couple months and I just did not get good sleep last night. Hence, today we're doing a recovery class. <laughs> oh my goodness. So as I wait for people to log on, I'm just going to keep hydrating. <sighs> um, also, if you're joining in from like directly from my Patreon, there is a way where you can navigate out of this. If you're watching live, navigate out of it and just go on to YouTube so that you can chat with us, check in, say hello. I think you just have to like navigate your little mouse down or on your trackpad and it should say like, navigate me out of here, boom. It should pop up relatively easy. Hopefully it does for you. Hi, Miss Helly. So good to see your name there. <sighs> Slow blink because my eyes feel so dry. I don't know if anybody else is dealing with like allergies from hell, but I am. <laughs> I feel like that only happened to me in spring, but now it happens like all the way through summer. I'm very confused. Yes. <laughs> yep, bad allergies, just. I mean, oddly enough, I've been dealing with like a constant congestion ever since we had COVID. I don't know if there's a link. There's got to be. Who knows? But maybe it was just the perfect confluence of things. Who knows? Oh, thanks for asking. Nicolette Pie is doing so much better today. She's super stoned right now, and she's laying on her little scratch pad throne. Maybe she'll come in. Maybe she'll be like, oh, mom's doing stuff. I'll come in. But yeah, if you um, didn't see in my message, I had also, this is, I think, contributing to my exhaustion, but I had such a rough time this weekend because we had this very, like, routine teeth cleaning procedure scheduled for her. Everything fine, boom. Uh, she goes in, apparently she starts getting super like aggressive. They sedate her a little bit. And when she goes under anesthesia, her vitals like dropped like dangerously low and they had to like rush the procedure, get out one tooth, and bring her out of anesthesia like as quick as possible to like make sure she doesn't die. <laughs> and so, oh my God, just, she was there all day Friday, 8 a.m. until closing so that they could monitor her and make sure she's okay. I was fucking an anxious ball of mess all day Friday. And then, you know, just making sure she has her needs met all weekend, getting her medication, making sure she's hydrating, she's peeing, like all those things. <gasps> Denisha, I'm so glad you're here right now. <laughs> so yeah, uh, short story long, Pi's doing so much better. 
she's just super stoned right now. She's on her gabapentin, so she's just like, Lisa Presta. Yay. Welcome. We're just chatting it up in here before we do class. Yes, LB, my twisty baby. Hello. <laughs> Hi. Oh. Yeah, we've been talking about everything. If you just logged on, we were talking about how bad my allergies are, hence my very red eyes, <laughs> and about my poor kitty. <laughs> yeah, Denisha, she been high. She been just like... <laughs> and now that she's feeling better, she's like, doing her like spry things but in a weird way because she's super high like she loves hopping up on the couch with us but last night she hopped up like from the back which is like not a good idea because the back of our couch is like this thin and she's like this wide you know <laughs> so she hops up and basically like tumbles into my lap because she's stoned yeah Yay, Stephanie, me too. I'm fucking... I'm probably also going to just teach a shorter class today if y'all are okay with that. I was like, 45 minutes would be great for me. But I know sometimes I say that and then it comes too quick, you know? I know, Beatrice. I was so scared. I know you understand because of your boys. <sighs> When I picked her up from the vet, she looked like she was in a bar fight. Like she looked drunk and beat to shit. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. Fucking crazy. I was like, let's get your ass home. The only other time she looked like kind of like this and acted like this is when she ran under my husband's grandparents' house in Texas and was like trapped under there for hours. She just came out and was like, bro, I have seen some shit. Like, that's just how she looked. <laughs> so yeah, I was like, no more fucking stunts, okay? You cannot Irish goodbye out of here without talking to me first, okay? <laughs> I know. Right, Stephanie? That was a that was a time. It just shows you how like my mother instinct is with this animal. <laughs> you would have to pay me a lot of money to crawl under a house, but if Pi went under there, I will go under there barefoot for free. <laughs> I'm going to change cameras. We're going to head over to the main scene since we should probably do class soon, right? <laughs> uh, this is how I feel today. I feel so floppy. Um, so again, our goal um, is to do, you know, super chill stuff. We're still going to like challenge the outer hips and everything because we're going to work on a shape called Gomukhasana, which is called cow facing. So very, you know, cross-leggedy, um, external rotating, and then lotus. So continuing the external rotation, but trying to get into our knees and into our ankles. So this is going to be a solid class for everybody. Yeah, no matter where you're coming from. <sighs> Props. That can be helpful. I'm probably going to go over this again since it's not quite class time, just about. But um, straps. So I have two different kinds of straps behind me. I want to show you the difference. I've got a fabric strap. So this obviously um, has the least amount of give because it's a woven fabric strap, right? So I want to do a little shoulder flossing. We're also going to do some leg stretching on the ground with it. It's going to be divine. 
Um, if you have something like a resistance band, particularly this long one, this is nice because this is going to stretch a little bit and have a little more give. I like using these in particular for shoulder flossing, but you can also use them just on your back if you're wanting to do some leg stretches, yeah? Yay. Um, outside of that, some other things that are gonna be really helpful, you don't have to have them, but they're just gonna add more to the class for you. I've got some blocks. I have like a whole block tower over there. You don't need four. Maybe you just have two or even just one. We can work with it. And then um, if you don't have that, but you have like a pillow or something to support your butt, because when we do that gomukasana, you may want to prop your butt up a little higher. So if you have something to just give you a little lift, that can be super helpful. I'm slurring my words because I'm so tired. <laughs> I keep waking up like in the middle of the night so congested. It's pissing me off so much. And then of course I wake up Kamar because I'm just like mouth breathing. I'm like, <laughs> so embarrassing. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, you cuties ready to go? I don't have like a particular playlist I'm rocking. I'm just like finding my own chill vibes. I encourage you to do the same, or you can just move without music and just listen to my voice, yeah? That's what I kind of like about these YouTube streams. Hey, Jen. Yeah, peep your own vibes. I like this chill mix. It's got like a little bit of everything on here. It's like Bonobo, Flying Lotus, Krungbin, Fortet. Um, there's ASAP Rocky. <laughs> it's all over the place, so I'm just going to kind of go with this one. <laughs> Sylvan Esso. Man, I haven't listened to Sylvan Esso in a long time. That sounds good. All right. I've got it on repeat. Ah, Lacey, yes, so glad you're here. Hello. I know we're keeping it recovery day, but we're still going to go intense into these hips. If you just hopped on props that are suggested, not required. I've got straps of two varieties, stretchy and not stretchy. I've got a bolster for my butt, probably won't use it, but it's there. And then I got a block tower. Maybe you use a block, maybe you use none, who knows. But we're gonna go into your shoulders, into your hips, knees and ankles. Let's get started laying down. I'm gonna bring, I'm gonna bring my heart strap with me. So the first shape I want you to find is going to be a broken bridge. That's not the official name, that's just what somebody said one time and I was like, I like that. So once you're all the way down on your back, you're gonna bend your knees, you're gonna walk your feet to the outside edges of your mat if you're on a mat, and then knock your knees together. So we're doing what's called adduction. Adduction is going to be talked about a lot through this class. So that just means you're taking two limbs and bringing them together. So once you're on your back, and you've got this bridge position, find a comfortable position for your arms, hands on your body, out by your side, above your head, and you're just gonna breathe. <sighs> Honestly, one of my favorite part about restorative classes is just the process of breath. Just that alone can be incredibly restorative. We're gonna take five more breaths here. <sighs> My God. All right, lovelies, we're gonna change position. All you're gonna do is heel toe your feet closer together. We're gonna bring them together and let the knees open up out to the side. So you're in what's called Supta Baddha Konasana. Okay. 
Again, three more breaths. Once you finish up that final breath, we're going to bring our legs back together, soles of the feet onto the ground, and you're gonna do one of two things. Either you're gonna keep the legs exactly like this, or you're gonna pick up the right leg and cross it over, yeah? We'll pick up our legs into a reverse tabletop, and then we're gonna go into a twist. Both knees over to your left hand side. Now, if you cross your legs and you feel like they can't make it to the ground, you can uncross them and stack them. Or you can grab one of your blocks or a bolster or something and place it underneath your knees, right? Because sometimes these things feel really good, but maybe you know they're a little inaccessible in the full variation of that shape. So I like to just Come into these things as the meet yourself where you are, yeah? All right, we'll take one last breath here in this twist and then we're just gonna do the other side. So once you finish up that breath, if you crossed, uncross, recross, other side, if you just stacked, stack them up. I like to come from this lifted position, so this like reverse tabletop, and then take my legs away. Oh, fuck. Having my lumbar pop like this is just everything I could want. All right, last breath here. <sighs> Let's bring it all the way back to center. If you cross your legs, uncross. This is where a strap can come into handy. I'm gonna loop it on the bottom of my right foot. I like to just bring my leg in, place, extend. Right, so we're going for hamstring stuff, but our main focus is going to be taking this leg crossbody and doing some ankle stretching with it. So first, just get yourself acclimated here. I'm going to encourage you to take this left leg away from you a bit. I want you to challenge your hamstring as much as you can. All the while, maintaining the slightest lumbar curve underneath you. So if your spine is smooshing and you're like tucking your tailbone, see if you can lengthen out a little more, even if you need to slightly bend your right leg. Speaking of bending your right leg, let's kind of roll with that. I'm kind of feeling it. I want you to micro bend and extend your right leg. Notice my micro bend is very micro. It's not that big. That way we're just teasing a little more space out of our hamstring. And you can do these micro bends and extends with the leg as close to you as you want. I know everybody's abilities are different in here and that's good. So again, meeting yourself where you are and making the shape work for you. Now the next time you're in your full extension, we'll transfer the strap or whatever you got into your left hand and keeping as much of the back on the ground as possible, we're gonna take this right leg across our body. Now something very important I want you to do, you can see my foot doing it right now. Here's my neutral position. We're gonna to try to sickle the foot. So I want you to turn the toes down to the ground. If you were looking at my foot from my perspective, it looks like you're rolling your ankle. That's what I want us to do. When we get into shapes like Padmasana and Lotus, this is exactly what your foot might be doing here. So we're wanting to get into the stretch outside the ankles, outside the calf. Maybe you even feel this all the way up into your IT band and up into the hip. If you're not feeling it into your hip, one little trick I like to do, lengthen out through my right side body and then imagine like my femur bone is working back deep into the socket. Yikes. Anytime I do that, I'm like, oh, okay. 
<laughs> That's where I feel it. Last little breath here. <laughs> All right, we're gonna take the sickle out of the foot, bring the leg back to center. Open up your strap if you're using that. Switch step and extend it up towards the sky. Oh man. All right, totally normal to have two very different experiences from side to side, okay? Again, encouraging you to creep away this right leg as much as you need, want. And then we're going for flex foot just because I want to get all up into these calf muscles. And we're encouraging lumbar curve here. Micro bending, extending, just to make friends with that hamstring. Left leg can be as close to you as you need. And then we'll go for one last bend and extend. I want you to hold that extension. Right hand is going to get the strap. Let's take your left leg across your midline or across your center point. And we're trying to keep as much of the low back in contact with the ground as possible, right? So we're not lifting, letting that back fall. We're going for the sickled foot. So I want you to turn your toes kind of down towards the ground. See the foot, it should look like you're kind of rolling your ankle. And then we're trying to anchor. We're trying to lengthen through the left side body and draw the femur head back into the socket. If we were in person, one of the meanest, most sadistic things I like to do is to stand on the other side of somebody's foot and literally gently push the whole leg back into the socket. Pretty wild. So if there's somebody there, maybe you can ask somebody after class uh, to try that out for you. It's pretty intense. Don't forget your breath, last two. And let's bring it all the way back up. All right, let's ditch this strap. Thank you for your service. We'll hug both of your knees in towards your chest. And we're just gonna gently rock side to side here. Again, this is a recovery class, so we're not trying to go nuts. So everything should feel good, feel restorative, a little more yin centric. If you wanna keep that yin vibe, you can roll yourself all the way off to one side, push yourself up using your top hand to get you into a seated position. Or if you still want a little bit of a sense of flow and a little bit of rigor, you can do rocks and rolls up and down the length of your mat. So I'll leave that up to you. I'll give you about 10 seconds or so to get to seated position at the top of your mat. Great. All right. Now, if you just use that strap and you like that, or if you have a band band that you would like to use, yay, Sharon, glad you're here, Tabitha. Thank you, I'm so glad you're here too. Sorry, I just looked up and saw the screen. <laughs> Better late than never. You just came at a perfect chunk. We did a little leg warm up, but we're onto our shoulders. So we're gonna do what's called shoulder flossing. You can also do this with a long towel, tea towel, whatever you got in the house, okay? You're gonna lift the arms up above your head and then try to take them back behind you. I suggested the band just cause it's got a little more give. That's all. So your shoulder flossing can just look like this. You can also go in a circle, yeah? Let me face you so you can see the pathway up, around, and back, yeah? Really like this one too. A little more dynamic, a little more serpentine through your ribs. Dancers, this is a great one for you. I 
Honestly, everybody, this is a good one for you. <laughs> Something you can do is you can find a super sticky spot, as I like to call it, and just kind of hang out there. Breathe into it. Sometimes it feels good to drop my chin towards my chest when I'm here too. All right, let's get this strap all the way back in front of us. Woo. If you need to wiggle out your shoulders a little bit before we move into tabletop, make that happen. And then we're going to, hopefully, you've got some blocks with you, utilize these blocks. I feel like you could also do this move with a bolster, just something that gives you a little bit of lift. I'll show you what both of these look like. We're gonna do a child's pose with blocks under either your hands, your forearms, or elbows. And then we're gonna do all sorts of stuff with it. So these can be on their lowest levels. That's the benefit of the blocks is you can choose level, right? Higher, highest, if you're just a total sicko. If you don't have blocks and you're working with something like a bolster, again, it can just be there for you. Stretch out, a lot more soft, a lot more give. I like it. So we're gonna spend five more breaths here. And then we're just gonna go deeper and deeper and more intense into the shoulders. because even though it's restorative, I still like a little intensity. All right, last breath here. And then we're going to work specifically into your triceps. You can keep the blocks at the same level. You can rock them up to brick. We're gonna to try to get our elbows onto the blocks. Hands are going to come together. You'll let your chest fall between there. And then we're going to try to get your thumbs back towards your spinal column. Now, ways you can intensify this in the shoulders. Instead of just being in like your child's pose lower half, you can come up onto your knees, kind of like you're going into puppy, and do the same thing. So there's just going to be a lot more uh, flexion in the shoulders here. You can try extending and re-bending the elbows just to give yourself a little break. Great, last breath here. And we're gonna bring ourselves up. Now we're all going to meet with ourselves a little more forward, so like hips over knees. Bricky bricks on that medium level. I want you to walk them out forwards in front of you. We're just going to do shoulder pulses. So you'll lift 
and lower. So a little more dynamic here. I've been really working on trying to get my chest down towards the ground here. Great, last three, last two. Let's hold this last one. Last three. Great, last two. And really gently on one, let's bring you back up. Yes. Thank you, shoulders. Yum. Let's take a little tuck-toed position. Have a seat. Take your arms behind you. Do a little chest expansion to counter that. Mm. And then we'll bring ourselves back through tabletop. Use an inhale to reach your heart forward. And an exhale to round into your cat back. Keep going through your cat cows. And I encourage any other movements that feel good, laterals, barrel rolls, any little thing you want. You can even do cat cow flow. Moving back and forward rhythmically. In 10 seconds, we're going to meet in down dog. Ah. Oh. Thanks for being here, Shayla. Layton, dive in, dive in with me. Sorry if you can hear my stomach, I'm hungry. All right, so after those 10 seconds of moving around, let's go into our first downward facing dog. We're not gonna spend a lot of time here. Ugh hips lift, everything pushes back. Maybe after all of our prep work with your hamstring and your shoulders, down dog feels a little bit friendlier. That's always nice, right? I want you to focus on your breath and focus on the orientation of your hips and your spine here. So if you feel like your spine is rounding a lot and your butt's pointing down, see if you can bend your knees a little bit or a lot a bit to help you lengthen a little bit more out. Butt bones, imagine those pointing like towards the back corner or even up to the sky if that helps. Even what we did earlier, those little bends and extends when we were on our backs with the legs up to the sky, those same techniques can help you here. You can bend one at a time, bend both, lengthen both at the same time. Just trying to encourage length through the hamstrings and through your calves. Let's give it three more breaths here. After that third breath, let's take a little walk to the front of our space. I'm going to have you hang in a forward fold. And in that forward fold, you can just let your arms dangle, grab for opposing elbows, or if you want one more of those shoulder counter stretches, chest expansion. So hands will come to your low back, you'll interlace them. You can even keep them bent. Some of you are going to feel the stretch just here or you can start to progress towards straight arms and aim on taking those um, knuckles closer towards the front, right? So the deeper you fold, the more extension you get into the shoulder, the closer the knuckles are going to show towards the front. I just realized my microphone was like in my sternum. <laughs> I'm sure that sounded like shit. Again, once you get your clasp, the closer the knuckles can go towards the front of the space. 
<laughs> I can never decide. I'm like, what do I clip my microphone onto? <laughs> what piece of whimsy fabric shall I adhere to? All right, let's bend our elbows, release our hands down. We're gonna heel toe the feet out wider and go down into Malasana. So, because I already know, some of you in here are like, ooh, Malasana is not my favorite. Either your heels levitate or it feels like you're falling backwards, maybe the knees are bugging. Things you can do to remedy that. Kind of a bitch, but rolling up your mat, I know. So many steps, so many things. You can literally step your heels onto your mat and go into your malasana from there. It's amazing. You can also take blocks, bolster them up, sit on them, make yourself a little stool. All those things are really great options that can help you getting more comfortable in this position, either with your ankle flexion your hip flexion or your external rotation because all those things are happening at the same time. <clears throat> so for my friends that are in deeper variations, say you've got a lot of hip flexion here, I want to give you a little variation that's going to tie in to our internal rotation with our arms for some Gomukhasana work. Lean over towards your left foot. Take your right arm like a paddle, place this little paddle into your hip crease, and then the arm to the front of the inner thigh. Same thing with the other. All right, so you got these funky little chicken wings. And then something I don't normally cue, but we're gonna roll to the inner edges of your feet and try to bring the arms closer together. You should feel a really big stretch in the posterior deltoid. So back of the shoulder, Kind of an odd one. Great, and then we'll open things back up, release these little paddles. Oof. Probably one of my favorite things to do after that is just lean for a moment, open up the arms off to one side, open them up off to the other. Mm. And then we'll bring it back to center, lift our butts, and go back into a fold. If you had a blanket or rolled up mat, take this time to like kick it back behind you. Now I'm gonna grab for my blocks again. Bring them underneath my hands. If you don't have blocks, but you're relatively flexible, you shouldn't have too hard of a time with this. We're gonna step back into a pyramid position. Yeah, see like that? 30 minutes is already gone. I don't know how it happens. All right, so here in your little pyramid shape, we're just gonna work through the spine. Think of it like your flowing cat-cow spines, same thing. So I like to melt with cow, right? So that's spinal extension. And then flow upwards through cat, right? Lengthen out at the top. Try to bring it down with your cow. And then bring it up with your cat. You don't have to do this. This is just a little bit of extra homework. Lengthen <laughs> and fold. But I know all of you, I know all of you are gold star people. So you're like, homework? That's a requirement. All right, the next time you melt down, I want you to stay there. If you don't like your hands on the blocks, you can also, I like this, I like this a lot. Take the hands kind of towards center of your mat or between where the legs are. Externally rotate the arms so the fingertips are facing back behind you. That really helps to encourage forehead towards shin. Mm. 
Okay, babies, let's bring it back. Ooh, I'm gonna walk myself onto the blocks. Okay, we're gonna do a little twist. The legs are gonna be the only thing twisting. Notice my feet right now. I'm gonna pick up the heel of my back leg and lift the toes of my front leg. I'm gonna turn to my right. I'm gonna keep walking with my hands. So it's almost like you're in a wide-legged fold but with your legs all twisted up. Now same thing here. I want you to create your cat back and then create your cow back. Notice that cow back, wow. What up, outer hips, sheesh. Again, a little round and a little lengthen. Let's hold that lengthen. I like to really think about the adduction here. So almost like I'm trying to squeeze my inner thighs together. Oof. Great, let's walk the blocks back towards the front. Careful. We'll step to the front and we'll switch. Easy, not bad, right? Pyramid. Now you can just stay and suffer in pyramid, right? <laughs> or if you were like me and you're like, I'm gonna do my cat cow spines. Again, we think cow, Ooh, that left hamstring, and then take it down. Cat to lift, cow to lower. Let's keep going, three more. And of course, the last time we go down towards the leg, we're gonna hold that for a bit. And if you tried the interesting hand positions with me, taking the hands off your blocks, externally rotating them and bringing them kind of like back towards your right foot. All right, let's bring you back. Ooh, hoo, hoo. Left toes lift, right heel lifts. Let's turn to our left hand side for that twist. My boobs are just begging to get out of this bodysuit. All right, so again, you can try your little cat cows. We're not really trying to fold here. We're trying to stay almost like we're in a halfway lift. But we're just doing these little micro adjustments with your hips and your spine. Now I want you to hold the long spine, the cow spine, quote unquote, almost like you're trying to back bend and then feel your inner thighs squeeze together like you're trying to uh, grab a hundo dollar bill. <sighs> Brutal. All right, let's bring ourselves back to the front. Careful. Yikes. And then instead of stepping your right foot all the way forwards, let's step both of our feet kind of just back like we're in tabletop but standing. And then we're gonna walk down to our shins. Let's do a little foot stretch before we get into the big stuff. Sit on your heels. Great, now my feet are kind of turning towards each other like this underneath me. That's totally fine. See if you can lean back and lift up one of your knees, just one. Great, let's try the other. Oof. Sometimes I wonder, I'm like, what have I been doing myself to make this so agonizing? All right, if you're a sicko like me, let's try both. Let's lean back, 
float up both of your knees. If you're like, girl, nope, my ankles don't work that way. That's fine. You just stay where you are. We'll meet you in three. We'll meet you in two. Last one. Let's bring it back down. Sit off side saddle. Bring the soles of your feet together, your knees wide. And instead of like feet all the way together, I want you to just connect the heels and splay out your feet, right? So they look like this. Splay out your feet, right? Now I want you to sit up nice and tall and go forwards. Something I like to do is I literally place my hands cupped like on my big toe ball mounds and toes and I like to pull those back as I pull myself forwards. Yeah? I can go forwards as much as I want. Great, we'll take ourselves back up. Place the soles of the feet all the way together. So big toe ball mound all the way to your toes. Try for it again. Notice if it feels just a little more spacious. Yeah? At least I notice it is for me. Maybe it's different for you. All right, we're gonna try a pretty intense lotus pattern and then we're gonna go to our gumukasana and then call it a day. So we'll bring ourselves all the way back up. Lengthen your legs forward in front of you. Oh, it's feeling so much better already. Right leg into a bend. And then open the hip. Yeah? I'll turn to face you for this, or I'll like angle myself out. Right? So it's just like your tree legs. If you're able to, see if you can place this foot on top of your thigh, close to your little hip crease. Now with Lotus, instead of keeping the foot in your dorsiflexion or like flexed, we want to just kind of let it relax, seeing if we can place the outer edge of your right foot into your hip crease area. Now I've been talking about sitting up tall, lengthening through your spine, the symbiosis of hip and spine. That's the same thing here. See if you can take it forwards a little bit. Maybe you work your way down into your full fold with your lotus. If you're somewhere back here, all good with me. I'm into it. If the foot didn't make it onto the hip crease for your Padmasana, don't worry about it. Just work through your figure fours. Now, if you're here, you're feeling pretty advanced and stretchy. Here is my final challenge for you. Keep everything the same. Bend your left leg. See if you can take this right knee kind of like towards the ground there. Maybe just this is enough of the challenge. Maybe you're like, I should do a bind. So shoulder comes to the inside of your left thigh, wrap around, internal rotation on the left arm, right arm also wraps around. And I just go for a seat belt grip where you just kind of cup the hands like little claws and interlink them. Then from there, you can take it all the way down and think forehead to the mat. Last three. Last two. I could stay here all day, but let's make our way out. That is a fucking ankle stretch. <laughs> All right, other side, I'm gonna again turn myself out. You guys doing okay? Are you alive? Somebody left, somebody's like, that's too much, I'm leaving, bye, psychopath. Tracy Lynn, giving too much. All right, so again, solo foot. You can go down. You can also take this foot on top. Take it into the lotus variation. We're trying to work the left knee down towards the earth. Yum. Take it forwards. We did spend some time here, so even if you did the advanced variation, take your moment. If 
Thanks, Julia. Much love to you. Thank you for sticking with us. All right, if you did the toughy, I know this doesn't really feel restorative, but you know. If you went all the way, shoulder comes to the inside of the right leg. Wrap around, go for your S grip. Forehead can come down to the ground for that max ankle stretch. All right, let's get out of there. Take your legs back in front of you, give it a little jiggle. Yeah, that's serious, serious business. All right, so we're gonna finish with Gomukhasana. I'm gonna give you the max version and the grounded version because both are going to work for everybody better or for some people better than others, if that makes sense. So we'll come around onto all fours. I like to start with my knees together, right? Because we're going into adduction. We're bringing limbs together. Right leg crosses behind, shin bone touches the ground. Open up the feet like you're a big New York slice of pizza and I want you to sit in that pizza. Now, variation modification number one, butt doesn't make it, make a block tower, make a pillow tower. Do whatever you can to prop yourself up. If none of that helps, go onto the ground and do the grounded version of this. Remember that tabletop cross? Same function. Legs open, think big piece of pizza. Hands on shins, and we're going to try to lengthen spine and pull the arms down from there, yeah? No shame in your level or where you're approaching this from because we're here to feel good. We're here to get into the hips, right? Now, if you're doing the version from seated, I want to encourage you to really feel like both sit bones are evenly working down, right? Because sometimes we kind of lean off to one side. Now you can just stay here with the hips, move forwards. You can take it more traditional and bring the hand grip in. Right arm comes behind you, reaches for your spine. Left arm internally rotates, S grip. It haunts you again. <laughs> you can also take this four, just depends on where your hips are at. Now we're just at the end, so we're just going to take about 10 more breaths here, because I do want you to stay in this position for a little while. All right, if you've got the hand grip, let's bring you up if you're forwards, let it go. Spend that extra moment in the hips, and then you can get out of this a couple ways. You can lean back forwards, untangle your legs. You can lean back, untangle the legs, or you can flex your feet, bring your hands over to the right, lift. You'll kind of go into a wide-legged fold Love it. And then you'll keep your journey moving clockwise and you're gonna land in the opposite side. If you're on your back, let the legs go. Cross, recross, same thing. We're all trying to anchor the buns down. 
Stay long through the spine. If you worked your Gomukhasana arms up top from the seated variation, bring it in here. We got about 10 more breaths. You guys got this. All right, babies. If you were forwards or if you had your arms, let's start to let them go. If you're on your back, stay on your back, untangle the legs, find a final shape. If you're here seated and went forwards, backwards, or spun around, let's do that. I'm gonna stay in this little wide-legged fold here for a sec, just because it's such a great counter for all that adduction. our way down onto our backs. If there's any counters to all those shapes that you need, you like, intuitively make it happen. And we'll spend a couple moments here on our back. Try to take your tongue away from the roof of your mouth. Taking these final five breaths with the slightest part in your lips. And from this original shape, starting to create really gentle movements.
arcing through the spine, top to bottom, or rocking side to side. We'll all eventually meet seated. Still feeling pretty tired, but I am so glad that I did all those stretches. Thank you guys for joining me, staying with me. Kind of thinking about making this more regular and doing like two powers on, one recovery, two powers on, one recovery. <laughs> Just feel like it's really important. Oh, Denisha, yes, baby. Felt really good. Oh, fucking just rolled over my toe with my office chair. <laughs> Same stuff. Yeah. Continue. I also notice I just get way better attendance. People are like, oh, hell yeah. <laughs> oh, thank you. Of course, Shayla, we're connected. <laughs> Thank you, Jen. Oh, Beatrice, thank you so much. Yes, LB, you got it. You got it. It's so important. Really, I feel like one of the most like underplayed parts of getting to any physical goals is rest and recovery. Like I can already tell like some of the redness left my eyes. I'm looking a lot more alive. Yes, Jessica. Yes. Oh, I know Nicolette. You know me, I love to yoga therapy ball everybody. Put balls in everybody's butts. In their legs. <gasps> Kayla. You're so welcome. <sighs> yeah. Also, I know I didn't really like promote it, but I was telling people all month that I'm, uh, while well, my camera's like freaking out. Hi, I'm here. Um, you know, I'm trying to still raise funds for reproductive rights here for people in the United States. Um, so today I chose, or for this week, I chose the Brigade Alliance. They provide food, travel, childcare, um, airfare, gas money um, for people trying to receive abortion. So if you have it in you, have an extra buck or two to donate, so appreciate it. You can just hold up your phone to this um, QR code in the corner and that's going to take you directly to my donation page for them. Um, it's really handy to do it this way. Streamlabs doesn't take any cuts. It just goes directly to them and I don't have to handle the money either and deal with weird tax stuff. It just goes straight to them. So yeah, I was like, before I go, let me mention that since I have it all here. <laughs> me too, Nicolette. I have like a dungeon full of balls. I got them in all shapes and sizes. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Denisha. 
I know it's tough. I know like money's tight for everybody right now with the way things are, but you know, it's, it's so hard. So, so appreciated. Probably after this month, I'll do like once a month donation classes, just find causes, you know, that need the help and make it happen. Oh, thanks, Jelena. Yeah, I'm going to, hopefully, I keep like saying I'm going to stream on Twitch, but then I don't. I just like play games with my husband and don't do it. <laughs> Sometimes I just want to game and not stream it, you know. But this Wednesday, I'm going to try to stream again, do the same thing, raise the monies for the peoples. I don't have a huge platform on Twitch by any stretch, but um, I do the best I can on here. That's all we can do. Every, every little bit counts. I'm like, is each class a different fundraiser? Yeah, so um, last week we did New Orleans. The week before that, we did Holler. Um, I seriously think my camera's freaking out because of the sunlight behind me. Oh, Beatrice, I love your Twitch streams too. Okay, I think that helped a lot. Yeah, it's so cool. I mean, you can literally just like point, boom. And then it takes you straight to the donation page. So cool, right? I think it links you to PayPal. I know not everybody has PayPal, but. I'm gonna test it right now because I haven't done it this way. Bam. I think I did it. Bam. Let's see if it works. Yes, that's me. Little notifications of thank yous. Yeah, so this, um, speaking of Twitch streams, since we're on to it, um, me and my husband have been playing this new game called V Rising. Um, as a duo, we've been kicking fucking ass. And we're on our final three bosses. And I told him, we need to stream these final three bosses together because we've been clapping cheeks all across uh, this game. And I'm like, I feel like people would be entertained by it. <laughs> so hopefully this Wednesday or like at any other times this week, we'll get on there together and you can hear us banter back and forth as we try to, try to fight these people. <laughs> I know it's silly. I know it's not for everybody. Some people are like, Twitch streams, weird. Okay, but yeah. So before we go, quick announcement for classes upcoming this week. Um, I'll have my beginner's class this Thursday. That's at 10 a.m. Pacific. 1 p.m. Eastern time. And I think that's 6 p.m. CSET. So my homies in Europe. It's more nighttime for you. And then this Friday, I, I guess I'm just in a restorative mood, but I'm gonna premiere this new class that's bar and restorative, how to love child together. So it'll be some bar moves, but very slowed down. Um, and then just a lot more stretch and lengthening focus so not a lot of jumping around or cardio or anything i guess i'm just not in the mood so this friday that'll be happening on my patreon at 5 p.m pacific standard 8 p.m eastern i know that's in the middle of the night if you're in europe i'm so sorry but i always record and repost my streams um that are on zoom so yeah <sighs> All right, my darlings, I'm here. If you have any questions,
feel free to type them in the chat. Or if you just want to say hi, bye, or leave just a little bit of love and support for everybody before we go. Oh, Jelena, I'm glad you're getting through it. It's so tough. I'm like still dealing with it a little bit, even two months later. Yay, Kayla. Yeah, we'll see how we do. <laughs> we fought this one guy the other day and it was a little sketchy. Kamar was like, why are you using that weapon? We all agreed to use this weapon. <laughs> so you can hear me and my husband talk shit to each other also at the same time. <laughs> yeah. Might do a stream or two this week for it. Have a beautiful day, Kayla. Love seeing your name in here. Hope you guys have a beautiful rest of your Monday. If we don't have any questions, um, we'll be back next week. Same time, same channel. I hope you have a wonderful Monday and a wonderful rest of your week. If I don't see you in any other classes, much love and support to you all. Thank you so much. I'll see you next time.